Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some romance books that have married couples in them. So the couples in these romance books are married. Some of them are marriage in trouble, some of them are just getting married as part of the plot. Some of them are either married before the book starts or they get married during the book obviously. None of these end with a marriage just by the way. Um, like either the wedding happens or the marriage happens before the book starts at the beginning or in the middle somewhere. So let's get into his recommendations. The first book that I want to mention is The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. This is a fantasy romance book that I am obsessed with. I love this one so much and I really want to do like a reread soon, but it is kind of chunky, so be aware. So this one is about Kazman and the winter king winter so Kasmin is actually the fourth daughter to the king of summerly however no one knows of her existence because her father actually hates her so the winter king winter in here um he has basically told the king of summerly hey i won't attack your land won't take over your land if you give me one of your very famous daughters to marry the king obviously her dad has to agree and he concocts this plan he's like I'm gonna marry him off to one of my daughters, but I'm not gonna marry him off to one of my famous daughters. He's gonna think he's marrying one, when in actuality, I'm gonna get rid of the daughter I hate. I don't remember necessarily the reason why he hated her. I think it might have to do with her mom possibly dying during childbirth or something. I think that's what it is. Don't count me on that though, but he does not like this kid, okay? He is obsessed with his other daughters, does not care for Kasman at all. Kasman also has storm powers, which is really cool in here. Like there's magic and everything in this book too. Um, so there's this wedding that happens where Winter is marrying this princess. He thinks he's marrying one of these princesses. It's not until after they're married and they're like on their way to his land that he realizes that he didn't marry the right daughter and he is mega pissed, okay? And Kasman is not too happy about this either. She's leaving the only life she's ever known. And so this is definitely a hate to love romance from the beginning because they both do not want to be in this situation whatsoever. But when it shifts into love, like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Like the two of them are stuck together because they're married. Like they're married, they have to be together. And like they bicker and banter and fight and then it grows to love. And the love that develops in here is epic. Completely recommend, please get over the cover. I know some people are like, I can't get past the cover. I think it's beautiful, hilarious, but beautiful. Don't judge a book by its cover, especially one that's this good on the inside, please. Next, I have Roomies by Christina Lauren. This was one of my favorites by them. I don't remember when this book came out, but the year that this book came out is my favorite book of the year, I remember. Um, I haven't read this in quite a long time though. Sorry, there's an eyelash somewhere on me. This one is about Holland and Calvin. Holland is the niece to this very famous um, Broadway composer and um, he is in need of a star for his show that can play, I think the guitar or an instrument. Essentially, he's looking for the star of the show. And she's like, wait a minute, I got the perfect person for you. I see him every single day on the subway and he is so talented. She's never talked to him before, but uh, one day she decides to go up to him and tell him about this job opportunity that, that, that she has for him. And he says like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. However, I'm about to, leave the country because I'm not from America and my green card expires soon. I think he's from Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't say on the back of the book, but he's essentially not from America. His green card has expired. He needs to leave the country and he can't be in a Broadway musical with an expired visa, you know? And so she's like, I have the perfect solution. Why don't we just get married? And he's like, excuse me? <laughs> and so the two of them get in a marriage of convenience so that he can be in this amazing Broadway show. And and so Holland can finally get to know the guy that she's had a crush on for all this time while longing from afar in a subway. Um, a little, it can sound a little, little creepy at first, but um, it works out, okay? It works out. <laughs> this was really fun. I'm also a big Broadway nerd. And so I love the talk of Broadway in here. Um, and their marriage was very interesting because it's obviously a marriage of convenience in a contemporary setting, which you don't like see a lot of. You mainly see it in these bad boys behind me, like historicals. Um, so this was very interesting to read about and I really recommend it if you have not read it and you love Christina Lauren's books. Next, I have Ever After Always by Chloe Lise. 
this is one of the romances where the couple is already married. This is actually a married in trouble romance. So Freya and Aiden are the two people in this relationship. Freya is kind of fed up with the way that Aiden is acting. She feels neglected and he's not spending as much time with her. All he's doing is working constantly. It's come to a point where she doesn't think that Aiden is the man that she married and she has basically told him to leave the apartment because um, she's sick of it. She's kind of like giving him a wake up call like, hey, what you're doing is affecting us negatively and it needs to change. If you don't change, you can leave. And this is a big wake up call for Aiden, but he is going through a lot of stuff at the moment. He's experiencing a lot of anxiety, especially involving the family plans that the two of them have. The two of them have planned on starting a family together, but he believes that since they're not rich or wealthy that it's going to be detrimental to them because they won't have enough money to support themselves you know and so he is taking a lot of time at work and doing all these jobs and doing all these programs and everything to make sure that they are set up for their future when in actuality his marriage is in trouble presently aiden is having a really hard time confiding in freya because he doesn't want to burden her with what's going on with him um i really connected to aiden in the anxiety aspect a lot of those things go through my brain literally on a daily basis so i felt this guy okay their relationship was beautiful to read about like them growing and then like going to therapy and finally like realizing like the way that they were years ago is not something that they can go back to. They've both grown as people and they need to realize that and accommodate to that and learn to fall in love with those people. Like they're, they're still the same person they fell in love with years ago. Um, they just have changed due to necessity and due to life. And that happens, that happens to people. If you've known someone for this long, however long they've been together, like no one's gonna stay the same, you know? This one is beautiful. Anything that Chloe Lee writes is beautiful to me. So of course I recommend this one. Next I have Neighborly by Christina Jackson. So this one is about Haven and uh, her boyfriend Calvin have been um, wanting to find a new place. They end up moving into this duplex. So it's basically like a house that's split down the middle. One person owns or couple owns one side and the other couple owns the other side essentially. Um, and so Tasha and Steven are a married couple who live on the other side of the duplex. And right when Tasha and Haven see each other, they are immediately attracted. And the two men in the relationship give them the all go to explore the relationship the two women are, have feelings towards each other, you know? So there is like a marriage in here. Uh, Tasha and Steven are married and they kind of get off on each other fantasizing about other people. Um, so there's a lot of elements going on in this one. This one was really hot, really fun. If you're wanting just a hot, amazing read like pick this one up please next i have a nun for the viking warrior by lucy morris this one is about amy and Jaron. amy is a nun and Jaron is a viking if you couldn't tell by the title and the cover so amy in a couple weeks is going to take her vows to god and become a full nun you know but she's a nun in training currently one night when she's at the nunnery like sleeping in her bed the doors end up being broken because Jurand has come to claim his bride. Her father has sworn her and promised her in marriage to Jurand so that he can have the land that she's inheriting essentially. Um, and so he knocks down the nunnery doors to come get his future wife. She's obviously petrified. She's petrified of her husband, but she has nothing to fear because he is a total softy and has, ever since they do get married, he becomes a total sweetheart and is pining after his wife. Um, but nothing has happened between them because both of them don't know how the other person feels and they it's basically like awkward kind of like a middle school crush love where like you like them but you don't really know what to do essentially um because they barely know each other you know um but he is super sweet and super cute the two of them get married at the very beginning of this book and they have to travel to the land that they have both inherited and learn to take care of the land and the tenants and everything and um amy is trying to figure out how life is going to be now because she always expected her whole entire life to be a nun and she never expected that she would ever find a husband or ever be married so um she's trying to work through that and Jurand is trying to respect his wife but is also totally lusting after her and oh this was so good next time another marriage of convenience we have or an arranged marriage marriage of convenience Marriage of convenience. Some of them, sometimes those two get mixed up for me, okay? Um, we have I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. This is an alien romance. This is about Susan and Alex. In order to have a better future, Susan has decided to become a mail order bride um, to Alex's planet. Alex is the ruler of his um, alien species tribe on this planet. And um, the two of them get an, an arranged 
or not arranged marriage, marriage of convenience. There you go. Again, tongue twisting for me. And they essentially become really close friends before anything really happens between the two of them. This book really reminds me of Radiance by Grace Draven. That book could also be on this list, but I talk about it way too much, so we're not going to do that. Um, but uh, they get married due to alliances and furthering people's positions and everything and then they become really close friends and then it develops into something more like susan never would have thought that she would have fallen in love with an alien who essentially looks like a lizard you know but um the friendship definitely leads her to loving him i really enjoyed this one and i can't wait to read the other books in the series very soon because all of them deal with weddings and being married at the like this all centers around the prime mating agency where the women or someone gets put into the prime mating agency and they get very sickly male order brighted somewhere you know for aliens anyway gonna read the rest of the book soon next i have devil in winter by lisa Kleipas. this is the third book in the wallflower series this one is about sebastian and evie this one is very popular in the series specifically because of sebastian i love this one mainly because of evie i love her as a character um so evie has grown up with a very severe stutter and she's basically a wallflower men have looked down upon her because of her stutter which is awful and her family is very abusive and they want to put her in a marriage that will benefit them and not her and marry her off to a gross person and so she decides to be brave and go to a man she knows needs to get married for money's sake and she's like i have a bunch of money i have a dowry I need to get married to escape my family and this horrible marriage they're gonna put me in. And so she goes to Sebastian. And if you read the other books in the series, Sebastian was kind of the villain in the last book. And she's like, I know that you need to get married desperately. Here you go, here's my dowry, marry me. And so the two of them travel to Scotland Yard to elope. And that whole scene, chapter, whenever they do go elope is, ugh, so good. Because like you previously read about Sebastian being this rakish dude who just wants money and will do anything to have it. But the way he cares for Evie during this trek is just so swoony, okay? He knows that her feet get really cold and so he makes sure to like put, um, I don't know what it's called back then, but it's kind of like those heating bricks under her feet to make her warm. Like, oh, this is so cute. Um, so yeah, the two of them get married and then the rest of the book is about them navigating their relationship and their dynamic. I love this one so much. One of my favorites in the series for sure. Another historical I have for you is In Bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks. This one is about Marin and Ewan. So Marin is a um, inheritor to this big piece of land. And so a lot of people are out to get her. Uh, men are wanting to marry her so that they can get the land by marrying her, you know? And so she gets kidnapped by this evil guy. And while she's getting kidnapped and he's bringing her back to where he lives, you know, um, they come across this little boy. They essentially kidnap him too. And so Marin has been tasked with, in her heart, to like guard and protect this boy at all costs. We'll do anything to save him, even get beaten herself to make sure this boy is not hurt. The two of them end up escaping and this little boy tells her that his father will protect her no matter what. If they get back to his keep, her fa his father will care for her and protect her from this evil man. And so the two of them escape and end up winding into this little boy's keep with his father, who is the clan leader. The clan leader realizes who Marin is and decides, oh, I'm going to marry her now. <laughs> He's very grateful that she saved his son, but now she's going to get married to him. And so she kind of doesn't really have a choice in this situation. Um, but of course, they fall in love with each other in historical romance fashion. Um, there are many reasons why people get married in historical romances. There are more bonkers ways than just this, you know? The betting, what the wedding betting scene, not my thing, not my favorite, you know? That's probably the reason why this Dr. Holstar for me was the wedding night or wedding couple of minutes. Not here for it. The rest of the book was amazing though. And I think like all Maya Banks' books have to do with marriages or weddings and stuff. So if you wanted to get into a historical romance author and you have not checked out Maya Banks yet, please do. Next, I have Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. So this is a MMF romance. So there's three people in a situation. So Grayson and Emma have been married for quite a long time. And every single Christmas, they go on vacation together and they bring Grayson's best friend, Derek, with them um, because that's always what they've done. This Christmas for this book, the three of them decide to all get together and um, Derek and Grayson realize that they have always had these feelings for each other and they're finally going to 
let them out and reveal themselves, you know? And so the three of them wind up together. This one is really hot. It's really fun in Katie Robert fashion. Um, so of course, I really recommend this one if you want something hot and fun to read. And lastly, I want to mention Lover or Looser by Tessa Bailey. This is a marriage and trouble romance. This is about Rosie and Dominic and their relationship has kind of been on the rocks ever since Dominic came back from service. Um, he is not the same man that he used to be. He is not attentive. He just, he, he basically ignores Rosie to an extent when they're at home and they have like passion together on the one day of the week they schedule to do it. They literally schedule it. <laughs> but other than that, Rosie's like, there's nothing and she's kind of sick of it. And Dominic is shocked when Rosie tells him, I want to split up. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, I love you. Like, what is going on? She's like, you have been distanc distancing yourself from me and I feel neglected and alone. Like, I feel like I'm not married to the same man I was before. And so um, Dominic actually has a lot of PTSD and trauma from what he's experienced in service. And he has basically put a wall up between him and Rosie to make sure she does not experience the things that he did and does not want to burden her with things that he's experienced. She basically tells Dominic, like, if you don't go to therapy with me, couples therapy, we're done. And so he obviously has to agree. He's like, I want to stay married to my wife. I love her. So I'm going to go to therapy with her, obviously. And so through them going to therapy, they realize what happened to their relationship and how they can come back together again. And I love this one. I know that not a lot of people do and I don't get why. Like this was so amazing. I love the discussion of marriage in here. This is one of my favorite marriage and trouble romances for sure. So of course, I really, really, really recommend this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romance books where the couple is married. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me any yellow related emoji a yellow heart, a yellow flower, a bumblebee, whatever suits your fancy. Um, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.